Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hello, everybody. This is Daphne, IELTSpodcast.com. Thank you for choosing to listen to this tutorial uh, where I'm going to look at some task one general topics. So firstly, wherever you are in the world, all of us here hope you and your family are safe and that you're all doing okay, managing to keep motivated and keep working towards your exam. Well done for continuing with your IELTS exam preparation. And if we're going to be optimistic, this is a great time to practice your writing skills and we're here to keep you going, keep you motivated give you some things to think about. In this tutorial today, uh, we're going to review some task one general topics. That's to say some of the subject, content, context and styles of letters, which you may be asked to write in the exam. And I want to talk you, you through some recent exam questions, which have been shared with us by our students who've taken their exam this year. So these recent task one general questions cover a huge range of topics ranging from parking a bicycle or moving house to designing a website. There's a huge range there. So if you are new to uh, IELTS or just want a reminder, let me run you through writing task one general topics. So in task one, candidates are asked to respond to a given problem uh, with a letter, um, requesting information or explaining a situation. So it's suggested that you take about 20 minutes on task one and you're required to write at least 150 words. You can go longer, 170, 180, depending on how fast you type. But I recommend not spending more than 20, more, more than 20 minutes, obviously, as you should save your energy for task two, which carries double the marks. So depending on the task suggested, candidates are assessed on their ability to engage in personal correspondence, elicit and provide factual information, express needs, wants, likes and dislikes, and express opinions, so that could be views or complaints. So I want to repeat that and just let's go over that in a bit more detail. What does that mean? Engage in personal correspondence. So this means write your letter using the correct tone. This is really important. Formal, informal or neutral. Start the letter in the correct way. For example, dear sir or madam, I'm writing to complain about a meal I had at your restaurant. And then obviously we need to look at the correct ending as well. So for dear sir or madam, the ending would be yours faithfully. And now second one, elicit and provide general factual information. So elicit, this means ask for, elicit, information. For example, I would be grateful if you could provide information about the cooking course offered on your website or giving information, which could be providing it, which could be information about you. I've previously worked in a similar independent cafe specializing in making birthday cakes. So this is giving or receiving information express needs, wants, likes, dislikes. This could be describing the kind of hotel room you're looking for or explaining why you need a downstairs room and expressing opinions. So of course this should be done in the language which is appropriate or suitable for context. So for a formal letter this might be, I have to inform you, I've never been treated so badly by a waiter in my life or more neutral. In my opinion, this was one of the worst hotels I've ever stayed in. So this is the sort of thing you're going to be doing in the task one. And so in this tutorial now, I'm going to divide it into two parts. First, we're going to have a look at some of the recent task one general topics themselves. So what they're about and what sort of situations you're going to respond to. And second, I'm going to suggest some really good sentences, which you might use yourselves when you're answering any of these tasks, which will guide you when you try and practice them at home. So let's get into looking at some task one general topics, 
which have been seen in exams recently and, as I say, shared with us by our students. So I've sorted these into formal, neutral and informal, just to help you. The formal letters. Uh, these include an offer of help to a head teacher of a local school about renovating some old buildings, a suggestion to the organiser of a local festival, giving feedback on last year's event and suggesting ideas for the one this year, acceptance of an invitation to speak at an international marketing conference, a letter of complaint to your landlord who wants to increase your rent, and a letter of complaint to a nearby restaurant about the noise late at night. So you can see the functions, offering to help, suggesting, accepting, or complaining. So those are the kind of things that you're gonna have, be having, having to do. Neutral. So neutral letters, this is quite skillful, is someone you know but not your best friend. So your language is going to be in between the formal and the informal. So this would be an apology. These are the recent ones. An apology to one of your teachers who lent you a book which has got damaged. Okay, so it's to a teacher, somebody you know, but not your best friend. A request to your manager at work to arrange parking for bicycles. An offer to a friend's mother to help arrange accommodation and suggesting a suitable itinerary when they visit your area. So an apology, a request or an offer. Uh, so the informal ones, we have got an offer again to a friend when they move house to help them move house. An apology for not being able to meet a friend and a suggestion as to what you do when you meet next time. So that's an apology and a suggestion. A request to a friend to help him design a website. Uh, yeah, he wants, sorry, for him to help you design a website, help design a website for you. An apology and explanation to a friend for damaging something he lent you. So you can see this functional language is repetitive. It's what is asked for in lots of these essays. And you are just gonna have to get the right tone. So there we have these topics, a wide variety of topics and situations, uh, as well as demanding confidence in functional language. So the range you're going to be requesting, apologising, suggesting, advising, complaining, and so on. But as far as the lexis or vocabulary is concerned, there's nothing too frightening here. And I really want to stress that. We have topics like work, eating out, moving house, talking about where you live, hotels or traveling. So this is not very difficult. It's important to think about because it should give you confidence to know you can approach this task without needing any specialist vocabulary. So you can really focus on getting the tone of your writing correct, a formal, informal, and on showing your communication skills. So this is what writing letters or emails is really all about. It's about the communication. So next, I'm going to look at four of these titles. So two informal, one formal, and one neutral. And give you some suggestions of sentences you might be able to use for this kind of thing. So let's look at the informal one first. First one, write a letter to a friend asking for his help to make a website. And the prompts, so you have three prompts, uh, which are in the task, the rubric, this is really your guide. It's like they're doing your planning for you. In your letter, you should describe what kind of website you want, say when you want the website to be done, explain how important the website is to you. So I'm going to read you some of the uh, sentences I wrote here. So I'm thinking of what kind of website do you want? Uh, this is my writing. Do you remember when I showed you the Airbnb website? Is there any chance you could try to design something like that one, which I think will get lots of clicks and customers for the new business? Okay, so what kind of website? I want one like the Airbnb one, please. And it's informal. Remember, I'm writing to a friend. So do you remember when I showed you? Uh, so this is the indication that you know each other already. Is there any chance you could try? So. 
This is quite informal language rather than I would politely request or whatever. So we're going more informal here. And this, I think we'll get lots of clicks and customers for the new business. So lots of clicks, again, quite informal language. The next prompt, how important this is for you. As you know, from patiently listening to me over many long evenings, I'm determined to make this amazing idea work as I really think it could be a money spinner. So any help you give me would be just fantastic. Okay. So informal, again, they know each other. As you know from patiently listening to me over many long evenings, I'm determined to make this amazing idea work. And the word money spinner uh, is an idiom about something that makes money quickly. Uh, so quite nice to put an idiom in because it's informal, so that would be quite appropriate. Uh, any help you could give me would be fantastic. So we've used informal adjectives. Uh, I've used uh, amazing, uh, amazing idea. I've used fantastic. Now, I wouldn't use those in a formal letter, but for an informal letter, that's absolutely fine. So the second one, your friend is moving to a new house and wants your help. Again, informal, it's your friend. Okay. So in the prompt, it says, I'm just turn over my page. Here we go. Uh, you should say why you are free, how you can help, and ask questions about the new house. So why you are free. It was good to get your email, and it's great you're finally moving, as I know your rented place is pretty cramped. Of course, I'd be happy to help you by packing up and moving boxes, and in fact, your timing is perfect as I've taken a month's leave to focus on my research project. So in just a few sentences there, we're addressing why you're free, because I've taken a month's leave to focus on my research product, project, how you can help, I'm gonna help by packing up and moving boxes. So just in that uh, first couple of sentences there, uh, I'm really starting to address the question. I'm using informal language. It's great you're finally moving. I know your rented place was pretty cramped. Cramped is another word for squashed or small. Um, of course, I'd be happy to help you move. And I'm not just saying move house, I'm not repeating. I'm saying packing up, moving boxes. So those are the kind of things you do when you move house. And then your timing is perfect because I've taken some leave anyway. So I'm showing I know the person. I'm showing you know, quite informal language there, obviously, with my choice of words. Questions about the new house. Do let me know more about where you'll be living. I wonder if you'll finally have a garden for the kids and will you have space for a home office? So I'm asking him to tell me more and I'm including some questions. There's an indirect question. I wonder if you'll finally have a garden and then a direct question. Will you have space for a home office? Okay, uh, so I hope that gives you an idea on that one. So the third one I want to have a look at, this is formal. So you'll notice immediately very different style of writing. You've been invited to deliver, it, to deliver a speech about your country at an international meeting. Okay, uh, here we go, the prompt. In your letter, you should accept the invitation and suggest preferable dates. Tell them what your talk will be about, okay, and tell them when you're, uh, yes, um, and tell them how long you're staying for afterwards. So, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for your kind invitation to speak at next month's conference. I'd be delighted to accept and will be honoured to share my recent work uh, with your esteemed colleagues. So thank you for your kind invitation to speak. So very formal. I'd be delighted to accept, again, very formal. Would be honored to share. So these are like fixed expressions that you would use for this sort of formal writing. If we were speaking to somebody, we wouldn't speak like this. It would sound very strange. But for this kind of writing, it's absolutely perfect. And my recent work with your esteemed colleagues, so esteemed, highly regarded. There I'm thanking for the invitation. What am I going to talk about? So I pr propose, so sorry, my idea, 
to introduce the participants to my latest medical research program uh, focus on children's education in my country, including an interactive question and answer session. I hope this will meet with your approval. So I propose to introduce the participants to my latest medical research program. Okay. Uh, informally, we just say, I'm going to talk about blah, blah, blah. But here, I propose to introduce the participants to is a very formal way of saying that. Uh, including an interactive question and answer session. I hope this will meet with your approval. Okay, so again, I'm not just saying, I hope that's okay, or is that okay? Uh, meet with your approval, very formal. These are f fixed expressions that it's really useful to learn, very important for formal writing. So again, you can see the difference in tone there, but I've tried to answer the right questions. Uh, using that sort of language. So the last one I want to look at is a neutral. Uh, neutral, This is the uh, question is, you recently completed a course and borrowed a book from your teacher, which you now want to return. So it's a teacher, he's my teacher or she's my teacher. I know them, maybe not very well, they might not be my friend, but I know them. So there's a difference here, uh, neutral to the one we just had, which was formal, uh, neutral tone, I'm going to start my letter. This is also really important. Dear Mr. Beckham, not dear sir, because I know this person. Uh, and the ending here would be kind regards or regards, something like that. Not yours faithfully, um, because again, that would be um, more appropriate for a formal letter. Okay. And uh, I just need to correct myself. No, 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 that's good. That's right, that's right. Okay, uh, so here we go, Mr. Beckham. I hope you're finally enjoying some rest now the university holidays have started. I would like to say once again how much I enjoyed your lectures, which have inspired me to continue reading and studying as much as possible. So you can see from that tone, I'm being polite, obviously, but it's also somebody I know. So I hope you're enjoying some rest. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say once again how much I enjoyed your lectures. Not informal, which would be your lectures were great. Uh, but I'd like to say how much I enjoyed your lectures, which have inspired me to continue reading and studying as much as possible. So also in that sentence, I've got some uh, grammar in there. Uh, past simple here, I enjoyed and have inspired me. Uh, is a nice present perfect there to continue reading. Uh, and then I'm going to get into the uh, prompt, which was the fact that you, haven't, you need to give back the essay. Why didn't you return it? You kindly lent me a copy of our core textbook, which I know I should have returned to you before the end of term, but I confess I completely forgot in my mad rush to catch the plane back home. It was a very useful, concise and informative work, and I did promise to return it before leaving. So here you're saying you're sorry you didn't give it back. You're saying why you didn't return it because that's what you were in a mad rush to catch the plane home. And you're also saying what was good about the book, which was it was very useful, concise and informative. So you've got the chance to show some, show some nice adjectives there. And also the kind of admission, I did promise to return it before leaving, but obviously I didn't, okay? So it's respectful, it's friendly, polite, but I hope you can see the difference there between it's not the same as the informal ones, which are obviously much more relaxed, and the formal ones, which is very formal. But we've looked at a lot of different topics in this, uh, and this was what we were trying to do, look at the topics. So I hope this has given you an insight into some of the most recent Task 1 general topics, which, as you can see, are varied. Uh, and really uh, quite unusual, some of them, uh, but they don't demand any specific academic language, which is great. So I'll look at different questions. I hope I've shown you some kind of sentences you might write if you come across a similar question when you do your exam. And maybe if you want to practice, you can try writing your own answers for these questions. Uh, I hope that you might find that quite useful. Uh, if you're struggling with your arts preparation and you want to get some super professional help, don't forget, sign up for our podcasts and our emails. 
ieltspodcast.com, ieltspodcast.com, full of tutorials and guidance and get involved in the course, uh, the amazing 12 sentence guide writing course, uh, which gives you essay feedback, video modules, really showing you how to get this writing done fantastically well. Uh, and we have great success with our students. We really enjoy working with you all. If you have a friend who's working towards IELTS and finding it difficult, please share this podcast with them. I'm really happy to help them as well. And good luck to all of you with all your preparation. Stay safe. I'm Daphne. Thank you for listening. IELTSpodcast.com.